guys my name is ibuku and welcome back to abba and ibuku tv if you're new here grab a seat have a glass of water just relax you're very welcome and if you're a returning subscriber guys lots of love i'm really thankful i run this little thing called makeup and gist where i talk about an historical event while doing my makeup so today i'm going to be bringing you a nollywood blockbuster Eh? When I say blockbuster, this is more than action film. Forget Jason Statham, forget Tom Cruise. This is the original, original, the original blockbuster. So, like all blockbusters, we will be shooting in two various locations: the United Kingdom, which is Britain, and of course, I said Nollywood. So, of course, you know it's going to be Nigeria. Again, like all blockbusters, we need A-list actors and actresses. Now, our protagonist for this story is Uma Rudiku who is a nigerian politician and our antagonist is going to be the nigerian government led by general muhammadu buhari before i get right into this story i'm just going to draw my brows and i'll be back don't go anywhere so we're in july 5th 1984 and we are at the stansted airport in london at the stansted airport is a nigerian diplomat now his name is mr edith and with him are two large crates very very big boxes and he's conversing with the uh, customs officer because he wants to board a plane heading towards Nigeria. Now, this customs officer, his name is Charles David Monroe. So Charles is asking Ededa, what's in the box? And Edda is saying, oh, it's just a, it's a diplomatic bag. It just contains some um, documents we are sending to Nigeria. And this young customs officer has never heard about anything called a diplomatic bag in his life. So he's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to talk to my boss. I'll be right back. So I'm going to try and put on my British accent. Please, in my mind, this is the way the British, the British speak. Don't come for me. Thank you very much. He goes to his boss and he's like, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Please. There's a man here. His name is Mr. Ether. And he has a box. He has a very large box with him. And he claims it's a diplomatic bag. And um, I can't search it. There's a problem. According to the Vienna Conventions, any bag that is classed called a diplomatic bag, no one can search it because it's not your business. But now, the boss now tells him that, yo, good fella, do you remember that news article that came from, from Scotland Yard that says that we should be very careful of cargo going to Nigeria and coming from Nigeria because there has been a kidnapping. And Charles is like, oh no it's likely like these boxes might contain kidnapped people because the boxes are very big the boss is like oh god how are we gonna search these boxes now now before a box can be classified as a diplomatic bag there has to be two conditions have to be met so the first condition is it must be accompanied by the right person which is like a diplomat and one mr edith is a diplomat so that first criteria has been fulfilled now the second criteria talks about how they must write diplomatic bag it must literally be written you must write diplomatic bag on the thing you're sending whether it's because of complacency or, or they forgot to, or they didn't know mr Erez didn't write diplomatic bag on the cargoes on the crate that they were taking to nigeria so his boss is like david charles david's monroe boss is like well since they haven't written diplomatic bag on these boxes well we can go ahead and search the box charles and his boss walk to mr edit and they're like i'm sorry sir but we have to search your crates here and it's like no it's a diplomatic bag you can't search it it's against the law and the people are like yes we can search it because you haven't met this criteria so immediately they say that then they signal for people to come and open the boxes and when they open the boxes guess what they found inside the boxes ding 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 they found bodies uh, there are two boxes okay and then in one box they can see a man that is knocked unconscious okay the man is shirtless he has a heart monitor and he had a tube in his throat to open his airway now beside this unconscious man is another man which looks like a doctor and it looks like he's the one that is taking care to make sure this man is okay now in the second box they found two macho men two macho men which we'll talk about later so the people looking into the box that is the 
the British um, customs officer. And then they turn around and then they can't find this Mr. Evans. The Evans is running away for his dear life. <laughs> if you were the one who stand there, well, well, well. Now, who is this unconscious man in the box? And why are there people around him? What is happening? What is happening in this dear world? Now, the man unconscious in the box is Umaru Diko. Now, Umaru Diko is a Nigerian politician. He was born in 1936 in Wamba, which is in like central Nigeria. So after having his secondary education in Nigeria, he went to um, UK, he went to the Bebek, is it Bebek College? where he graduated the first class in business administration or something something related to business so he went at the bbc for some time where he served as the AUSA translator and then afterwards he flew back to nigeria where he served as a commi commissioner of kaduna state now after this he became the campaign manager of mr shehu shagari who was a presidential candidate now mr shehu shagari went on to win the elections and then he made Umaru his minister of transport. And then the president made something called the, the presidential tax force of rice, where Mr. Umaru was now made the head. So Mr. Umaru was in charge of like conducting the imports, import and exports of rice. He served in these roles from 1789 to 1883. Now, like almost all government at that time, the Shehu Shagari um, government was like filled with corruption. If you're in Africa, then you know it's not like a new phenomenon for us. So he was the Shehu Shagari government was overthrown by Buhari in 1983. We know when there when there has been a coup, people are not saved. Especially if you're a member of the government that was just overthrown, you know that things are not going to be looking good for you. So people have to, to run for their lives because the new government is coming for you. Now Buhari goes into government and he has a list. This list are all ministers of the old government and he's accusing them of stealing money marudiko is accused of stealing at least one billion dollars of state money now they said that when he was the head of the presidential tax force on rice he was inflating the cost of the rice and he was selling at higher price and he was pocketing money they also said that he stole he stole nigerian oil money so this guy he's he's wanted they want him to come and account the nigerian government officials led by buhari they are looking for this guy they can't find umaru where is umaru it is believed that umaru diko has fled nigeria with his personal secretary called um, miss elizabeth hayes he fled nigeria dressed as a priest so he went to benin then he went to togo and then from togo he flew to uk and buhari is searching all over for umaru diko he has a hunch that umaru diko has fled to the uk because at that time it was very common because nigeria still had a very close nigeria has a very close relationship with her former colonial master but he can't trust the uk government because he knows the uk government would not extradite umaru Diko. so he goes to his other ally which is israel now even though there was no diplomatic relationship between israel and buhari at that time there was some sort of alliance between israel and nigeria so nigeria would give israel oil and in return israel will give nigeria like arms intelligence officers and all that so the nigeria government goes to israel and they tell them that okay we're looking for this guy he has stolen a lot of money and we need him to come and account for his his sins israel now assists um nigeria with some mossad agents which is like the israeli secret service they give them like three men one of them is called alexander barak Felix Abitsbo and Dr. Levi Avi Shapiro, which is the guy, the doctor that they found in the crates with Umaru. Nigerian secret service is led by Major Mohamed Yusufu. Nigerians going on the, the trip to acquire this man acts like they need a um, political asylum. And then this Israel this Israeli agent, they act like oh they are tourists. And then they move the arms to the uk where they are like looking for umaru these two teams they're just walking around going to the nigerian community talking to people they're just trying to find umaru on june 30th 1984 one of the mossad agents miraculously saw umaru and then they tailed him to his house and then they start observing him they started watching him and they were now planning how they were going to kidnap him on july 
1984. Omar already could not know what is going on. I'm sure he, he was in his house living his best life, thinking that, oh, he's safe. And then he tells his family that, oh, he wants to go for a walk. But he's like, I've been home the whole day. I don't go anywhere. I'm just tired of this house. I need to, I need to go out. And they are saying, don't go, don't go. Omar is like, I'll go. Just, I just want to do a quick stop. Just like, have the fresh air. Feel the breeze on my face. So that's what Omar was saying. And they were like, okay, well, just be careful. So immediately, he walks out of his house. Nah. Boo -boo. Then some yellow van, they just drive in. Some macho men just got us from the car. And they just grabbed him and they put him through the car. Omar went on to describe that they had put... Uh, black cloth over his face and someone sat on him and that's the last thing he remembered while he's in the van the kidnappers now go ahead and they inject him with an anesthesia to knock him out and they drive straight to london zoo and from london zoo they change their cars and they put him in the box and they had a doctor inside the box with him to monitor and the other Mossad agents to enter the, the next other box to like make sure everything is safe now unknown to the kidnappers his secretary miss elizabeth hayes actually saw when they were grabbing him nearly placed a call to the scotland yard to alert them that her boss has been kidnapped and she's sure that they're taking him to nigeria so the kidnappers now drive to the airport where they would meet up with mr edith who has like a nigerian plane waiting and then they can smuggle omaru back to nigeria no guys all this didn't happen their kidnap plan is foiled by this pretty officer. May you find a Charles David Manu in your life. Can I hear an amen? Guys, I'm going to wear my lashes and then we'll talk about the aftermath. Okay guys, so I am back. I popped some lashes and I did a very simple nude glossy lip. And that is it for our look. So guys, let's jump back into the story. Now, it is said that after all this botched kidnapping, relationships between Nigeria and the Britain became really really bad so Nigerian cancelled all flights to Britain and Britain to cancelled all flights to Nigeria some Nigerian high officials were arrested in UK and in Nigeria some British high ranking officers were also arrested it was just a whole mess Mario was fine he went back home and he even flew back to Nigeria I think I saw a video on YouTube where he talked about how the things affected him he of course denied that he has stolen any money it was just a government persecution and the nigerian government in turn also said that they had no hands in this alleged kidnapping they didn't know what was happening like but how do you feel like how do you personally feel about this story for me i don't know i think it's a mixed feeling because if he indeed stole all that money then he was never held accountable he lived in a political climate where our leaders actually profit of as innocent citizens the story was very interesting for me to learn i hope you found it interesting as well but guys please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and also like and leave a comment it really helps our channel grow and also share the video with a few friends and tell them about this very interesting channel so guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on our next video bye this guy is so aggressive why like all blockbusters? This your god, this your god says. What is the problem? I'm going to need two actors. We are going to be fuck General Muhammadu. But there's a Baumia. <laughs> General Muhammad Muhammad Eko. I can say Muhammadu. I can say what? I'm not saying what. General Muhammadu. But ah, why am I saying Baumia? <laughs> Spuhari, forgot.